that's such an important thing. You, you said we need to hear. Um, and, and so I think a lot of times we get caught up with worries because we think don't worry means don't think. And like, I don't know how to not think. That's the problem with worry is that I just keep thinking about the thing over and over again. Um, instead of not thinking, uh, hear, hear it in a different frame of reference. Instead of thinking about it as if God would abandon you, think about it as if God would prom keep his promises to you. And, and to do that, you're going to need to hear the promises. Yeah, absolutely. So where do you hear those promises? Well, <laughs> Sunday morning, right? You hear them in church. You hear them when you read the word of God. You hear them uh, through family and friends who affirm you um, as, as Christ has, right? Who remind you of who you are in Christ. Our identities um, were formed uh, from the beginning, right? Our identities from the, the moment that we are created in our mother's womb. From the moment that that's, that zygote exists, we have an identity, and that is an that is a, a child of God who is loved by God, created by God, and redeemed by His Son. And we know that baptism forms our identity as well, right? Uh, makes us part of the family of God, brings us in as a son or daughter, a brother or sister to Christ, a son or daughter to God Himself. Uh, and a brother or sister to Christ. So our identities, those things are permanent. Hmm. Those things, those things don't go away with the social group that we interact with, or whether or not we make the basketball team, or whether we get an A or a C or a D, right? Uh, our, our identities are, are, are permanent. And those are the things that we need to be reminded of uh, when we feel worry um, and we're ultimately trusting in ourselves and or questioning our future, we, we go back to that identity that God has given us and to the promises he has given us and to the hope he has given us because his hope is certain. I mean, you said it, right? It, it's, it's thinking about and remembering the promises that God has given us and that he will fulfill. That, that changes the the shape of things too. You you mentioned, you know, just sort of um, the identity that the, this unchangeable thing um, and, and worry chips away at this. Like it, it, it makes mountains out of molehills. It makes that one thing into something enormous when in reality, it can't change who you are in Christ. It, it's sort of reordering then how I look at the world so that the things that I think are big are actually the right size again. And the things that I think are little, like God's promises are actually again, the right size again. <laughs> That's, right. that's, that's huge. Um, so if you're worrying, um, you, you get to go and hear these things, but what do you maybe do uh, if somebody comes to you who is worried? Where, where can you point them? Yeah, so so first of all, you, you affirm that they are loved, right? And you speak the words of God to them uh, rather than, you know, it's going to be okay. Well, yeah, it is going to be okay. Uh, it's going to be okay because God says it's going to be okay, mm. right? Um, God, God is with you. So it's okay to say those, those affirming words, but connect them to Christ, connect those affirming words to Christ. We, it's not going to be okay just because we say it's okay. Right. But because God says these two, these things shall pass, hmm. right? Uh, that God says he has something good in store for you. God says you are a beloved child of his. And so, so these are the words we need to share with our friends when they're worried. Um, but then we also connect them to the people who, who can care for them. Um, not just us, but also adults in their lives, their pastors, their Christian teachers, uh, if need be a, a Christian counselor um, that can help them, help them understand where this worry is or anxiety is rooted um, and how to have healthy responses to that. Um, and, and some of those, some of those can be very physical things, right? Deep breaths, um, putting things into perspectives, right? Remembering the promises God has already fulfilled in your life and the, and the times when those worries have, have already been overcome. Um, and, 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 you know, the evidences that God has been at work. Um, there are some things that we can do just on a, on a, very small scale um, without professional medical help, but it's good to let adults know so that if the professional medical help is needed, um, it can be accessed, right? Fantastic. That makes a lot of sense. Um, anything else about worry? Uh, I think just 
final verse, right? Um, so I, I mentioned um, some a passage earlier, but I think so. I have I First Peter, First Peter five. I have my Bible open to it. Um, but First Peter five six and seven uh, says, "Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time He may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you." Right? Um, what a what a wonderful promise. Uh, to be able to, and what a wonderful opportunity to be able to cast your cares on Christ. He wants to carry them for us, right? He doesn't want that to be a burden of ours. And so every time we feel that burden, every time we we get trapped in that that intellectual mind game, right? What if, what if, what if? Um, we can answer the what ifs. The what ifs are answered in Christ. They are answered in his sacrifice. They are answered for our future. Um, we know the answers. And, and yes, minute by minute, there may be some things that, that we don't know, but we do know that we have a God we can trust in to, um, to handle all of those situations. Absolutely. And that, that refocuses us so that when we start to chase those things that take away from life to, to cope with our fear as if we have to be gods here, we can remind ourselves, we can be reminded that we have a God who cares for us. And, and so all of those things that we chase after to find comfort, they're, they're, they're a pale shadow of him who has conquered death. Absolutely. Michelle Bauman, the director of Why for Life. Thank you so much for being here with us. Uh, if you guys are listening, go check out Why for Life on Instagram. Follow them. They're on the TikTok now doing really good stuff too. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks so much for inviting me. Have a good one.